Hey everybody, Malice here, lead director and developer of Soulscraft, and I'm joined here by Nick, lead map designer of Soulscraft. Yes, and today Friendly neighborhood whipcracker. Whipcracker, yeah, absolutely, because we love whipping our builders into shape. Here we are going to be doing a playthrough Brutally. of the Undead Parish, but I'd like to take a minute here and just explain what we've done with our character as he is different from the last video. Uh, as you can see, our stats are significantly higher, uh, specifically Dexterity uh, and the Vitality, and also Endurance. So, the Dexterity is there for the prerequisite for the Ayato Blade. Uh, which is a ty uh, type of katana. Um, so it, it requires, I believe, 14 strength to use. Yes, 14 and 20 dexterity to use. But it scales pretty good with, with dexterity, so it's cool. Here we have our armor set. Uh, it's a bit of a combination of a few things. So we've got the shadow set, which we use the uh, shadow mask, shadow gloves, and shadow pants. And we're using it in, uh, in sync with the Wanderer coat, just because it's it's more pleasing to the eye, in my opinion. But yeah, I think that's really that I've always really admired about Dark Souls armor is that while each set has its own style, they're designed the art design is in such a way that you can mix and match sets. Oh yeah, it's really effective for sure. Good. Here we're looking at the dark wood grain ring, and actually it's it's a bit tricky to obtain, as you have to go through the dark root garden, which we will be looking at in future videos. Um, but it was it was a big deal in this character build because you know he's so low level, and you got to be a little bit higher to uh, to take on those NPCs that guard the the forest. So very very cool that I got that. Also the shadow the shadow set is found in the upper blight town. So that was pretty tricky to get as well. I died numerous times. Um, but he did it just for you guys. We did it just for you. So watch these videos, you bastards. <laughs> I'll come and slap you. <laughs> just kidding. I won't slap you, but you better watch this. Anyway. Uh, this is the Ayato. This is the katana. Uh, it is very different from the other katanas that you can get, which is actually four in total katanas in the game. Uh, the the uh, what was the first one? The first one that you can get is the Uchi katana. Uchi katana, and the second is the washing pole, which is a very long sword. Just think Think Sephiroth, and you, you'll get this, the the, the length of the of the washing pole. Sephiroth. It's actually pretty cool. I like the washing pole. Yeah. Then it's this one, the Ayato, and the Chaos Blade, which is a boss weapon. See, here we are going to run past Bitch Drake. He is very inconsistent with how he handles your proceeding through this bridge. Sometimes Usually. he'll kill you. Sometimes exactly. he'll breathe fire. You know, it's, it's very... actually a really good method. It mo it kills most new players because they'll just breathe fire and just kill you. But actually, if you exploit and bait his fire attack, it's a really good method of farming, especially at early levels. Because all those undead yes. above us on the bridge will die once he uses his fire attack, and you'll you get the souls. So if you can, if it takes skill, but if you can bait his fire attack and run down here in time. You'll gain something it's something like 500 souls, something like that. It's a really effective farming method at early levels. I'm pretty, fairly certain they put stuff like that in on purpose, just to throw you a little bone if you're clever enough to see it. Yes. So you see here, I was challenged by two hollow soldiers, and they were really taking advantage of the stair. So you can't quite parry them when they're elevated above you. And, uh,. Yeah, they were just using good positioning, but I am too badass to uh, let that affect me, and I do proceed with their souls. As you can see here, we're sort of under the bridge, um, just sort of taking the environment. You can see almost all of Undead Berg from up here. And if you pay attention, you might be able to recognize areas that we've seen in previous videos. Mm -hmm. Actually explored. I do 
do believe you could see Sense Fortress, uh, not Sense Fortress, but Anne Orlando from here. At least a glimpse of it. The, the walls. Yeah. Yeah, nice backstab. And I think for these cast, this first, the first half, good first half of the game, not first half, good first, I would say sixth or fifth of the game, is just the very much medieval castle, knight, king, and knight feel. And I feel like in previous videos, we've done a lot of commentary, really analyzing in depth the design, hey, the look the, of the environments. So now in this video, sort of closing up this section of the game, you can just sit back and enjoy take in the environments as we just we just talk about the gameplay of Dark Souls. We're just gonna soak in all these awesome looking castles and yeah. things like that. Definitely get inspired by these these builds. We want something similar on Soulscraft. Here we're just sort of looking. There's a dragon tail. If you actually shoot that thing enough with a bow and arrow, you can actually get the Drake Sword, which is a fairly powerful weapon early game. Here, Later looking. on it gets passed up in strength by other weapons that you can upgrade. Right. There's no damage scaling with that that weapon, so very good. good. For new players. Yes, good. Very good for new players in fact. There's one of the bones that they throw for you. Here we're just looking. Look at it. Look at that style. It's so so nice. And again, look at the organic placement. There's nothing really I mean, you just sort of see the, the castle kind of, the castle walls kind of curve around the terrain. There's no consistency of where everything is placed. It's just organically there. Looks like it sprang up as a real city would. It does not look like it was designed by a game designer. It looks like an organic, growing, bustling city. Or at least was. something that was a bustling city at one time. Yes, nothing is going to be intact in Soulscraft. Everything is going to be ruined. Here we're going up the ladder to the first part of the Undead Parish. Ah, here we go. Our first hollow. That thrust attack. Very tricky to parry. Oh, I never noticed that the strong R2 attack of the Iato is different than the uh, Uchi Katana. Yeah, it's in the a... Uchi Katana, the R2 is a, a stabbing attack, but I guess in the Iyato it's a slashing. I never noticed that. Yeah, it's, it's very uh, interesting. Yeah, it's actually based on a style of uh, of uh, attacks that samurai used to use back in feudal Japan, where they actually utilize the draw strength of uh, the mm -hmm. katanas. It's very interesting how they how they implemented that here. I forget yeah. the name of the, the style, but it's actually very real. Very, very interesting. Just another example of the detail and care and thought that they put into every aspect of the game. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Whoa, ninja This guy's a bitch. This guy's an asshole. Stabbing well, in the anus. He's an asshole that's going to be taking it. In the asshole. Yes. Look at that. He already knows that we're sort of trying to abuse his uh, weak point but nobody can anus. yeah nobody can take too many hits to the anus I don't think well maybe Curtis <laughs> Curtis and his but, fortune cookies sorry Curtis we had that to do it we had to do it as you can see here there's a strategic placement of the archers and this this hollow knight this guy will actually just sit here and guard everything while you have to sort of dodge these these arrows. And that's, actually... you know, honestly, they probably coded his AI on purpose to just be very defensive because they knew that those archers were going to be firing at you the whole time while you're waiting, you know, for his guard to let up. I should have done that right from the beginning, just kick a shield. Yeah. Not a lot of new players know that you can do that if you use the kick move on an enemy that's shielding, it will actually break his guard. Yes, actually, breaking of guards. In the Japanese version of the game, little known fact, in the Japanese version of the game, that doesn't work. Kicking an enemy will not break their guard in the gap in the Japanese version. I guess. Wow, Asians I didn't know that. Just, yeah, Asians are just too uh too skilled for pussy tactics like that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I like the Ayato Blade. I think it really synergizes well with the Ninja Ring. You can do a light attack and, and do a, a Ninja Flip immediately afterwards. It's a very nice, nice detail. Here we're just sort of soaking up the undead relish. Goes well with undead burger. So we did go through the undead burger. Just like looking around here. See that there's like these shrubs sort of growing out of the the uh, the ground. Vegetation just coming in. The new owners of this castle. Vines. Just really, really green, organic-y feel to all the stone. These arcways, I'm very uh, a fan of arcways. Now, this gate is normally not open, but since I did sort of visit here, uh, I actually got the basement key that is on that yeah. body right there. Um, and this normally, is the lever. Yeah, exactly. Normally you have to go through the basement. Which I do the, go the through. Ladder. But yeah, if you're definitely. actually quite, if you're fast enough, you can actually get through that, that gate before they can even close it. So, just a nice little something the developers know. put. Yeah, you have to know what's coming though. If you didn't know that the guy was going to close the gate, you would never, probably never be fast enough. Because you'd just be like freaked out by that metal bore. You'd be like, oh my, like how do I even kill this thing? Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely an intimidating opponent at first. And until you, me a few once times. you figure out where his weak spot is, he's pretty manageable. Yeah. Although there is a different version of that metal bore, and it's actually gotten armor on his butthole, so you can't. Yep. They can't, learned. They learned that the the butthole is a very important place <laughs> to a, a yes. bore. I'm getting a little frame rate issue here. Wow. Lag spike. No problems. We just powered through it. Dark Souls like has a, trained us. Like a <laughs> even even lag does not stop a true Dark Souls player. Absolutely. Now usually there's an item. On there. The court. I believe it was a lost soul. A, uh, Something a like that. Nameless soldier. Very small one. Two hundred souls, I believe. Bankable souls is pretty cool. Yeah, we're taking a pause here to to ready up for the next part of Undead Relish. Here's a bit of a, a, a labyrinth almost. I I would feel. Just oh, take a yeah, look at the the pillars on the the side there. I like that. Here we're These gonna... sort of very, very narrow corridors with pillars on the side and arches are very, very easily translated into Minecraft. Mm -hmm. These narrow, narrow tiled passes, passageways and bridges. You know, I like to point take out some cobblestone wall and some stone slabs. Very, yeah. very easily translated. I like to point out that there was a night shield here. Nice Which shield. I'm kind of surprised that you're not using right now, or is it too heavy? It's too heavy. Uh. Definitely, definitely don't want to take any unnecessary weight. The wooden shield that I feel was a, is a, a nice light alternative, as we're not going to be using a shield in our final build. By the way, that wall that you saw up there is actually the wall to An Orlando. An Orlando. One of the later areas of the game, and if you saw a tower off in the distance, that's actually the Duke's archives. Another area that you could access later in the game. Personally, not my favorite uh, uh, area, but <laughs> it's quite detailed. It's sort of a hate-love relationship with a lot of the areas in Dark Souls. Yeah, same, same with me. Yeah, this guy didn't know that uh, his shield was useless to that me. You, that you're a badass. Yeah, didn't know. Here's oh, a tricky that a, area. That guy's a badass. Here's another tricky area that most players die at. You actually there's don't see guy. him. But there's a Balder Knight just waiting around the corner. Come up and stab you in the back. 
that is a side sword that he is using, which I proudly achieved on my my first kill inside of the cathedral. Now I tried to to heal himself up, but lag tactics do not work here. I'm afraid. That's something that people abuse in PvP, I would think. Ah, here we see that this is the area that we first looked at. It was, it now, was if you were going, Yeah, if you were going through this area for the first time, this is where you would open that gate. Yes. Oh, nice parry right. there. Right in the dick. Right in the dick. He is a dick. Yeah, yeah, he deserves it. Now this is where this is where the enemies start getting beefy. I remember when I first got to this place, I was very, very intimidated by these new enemies. That if you can see that big heavy armor looking yeah. guy in the background there, I remember seeing that guy and being like, ooh, this is shit's getting serious now. Yeah. That guy yeah. looks big. <laughs> That guy is definitely was a very imposing figure uh, in my first gameplay. Uh, ooh, I'm getting a little bit reckless over here, thinking I can parry anything. Oh, looking for the backstab. I miss it. Ooh, am I gonna pot? Am I gonna heal up? Yes, I am. Check some sunny D. Some sunny D. Ah. Uh, they, those knights in particular drop a lot of titanite shards, which are very useful for upgrading your early items and gears. There's the knight of, uh, what was it? Berenique. Berenique. Little this frame new... lag. There we go. As a worthy, worthy opponent right here. Yes, this is going to be a very amusing battle. Woo! He's a very wide arcing uh, attack set. They they tell or they uh, telemark their their moves very very obviously. Oop. So if you're if you know their move sets, if you know their attack speeds, you can dodge them pretty easily. But the first time you go up against them, they're extremely intimidating. Yes, yes very they are. hard to block. Just utilizing the ninja flips here to really get those invincibility frames, and I'm just going in and out. Although I do get a bit reckless here, and I do take some unnecessary damage. Here, I'm just going to let him finish his attack, and finish him off. And I will pick up his Titanite Shard, which... See, so he sometimes drops his armor, which is a very, very heavy, heavy armor with lots of protection. Balder. The Balder set. Or was it the iron, the steel armor, I believe it was. It's not the Balder set? No, no, it's not the Balder set. Those are the Balder Knights. He drops his, oh. his uh, steel chest plate. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, there was a Firekeeper soul here, but I took the liberty of just sort of... Taking it. Taking it first. Here, we're sort of taking a close-up of uh, the statue and little intricate details, as uh, Dale has requested. I did take screenshots at this point. But a very nice, elegant design within Dark Souls. Very nice. But, you know, feel free to pause the video and just really soak in the details if you want to reincarnate this into the Souls craft. I actually died there. But we're coming You're back. You're editing out your death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, They definitely don't want me to, to see me die. Yeah. yeah, you never die. What are you talking about? I, I, I never die. That, that yeah. green stuff over there is just... It's just there for yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, that guy, that guy took a shit. Yeah, absolutely. He took a crap, and now I have to clean it up. Yeah, that's, yeah. One of the grosser mechanics of the game. You absolutely. Clean up other people's shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of disgusting, but, you know, they just wanted the extra detail, the extra realism. Yes, the realism. Here we're sort of soaking up this, this bridge here. Look at this bridge, this little that little extension there was crooked. Very, very interesting way of putting that. Dark Souls is not a game where the map designers just had a tile set to work with and just copy and pasted tiles everywhere. 
no, nothing is pre-made. Everything, uh, literally every every area in the game was handmade. Yes. Unique. I think that nothing, that, that right there is no more. Pre yeah. There's no prefabricated parts, no tile sets to work with. Everything is uh, was hand done. Yeah. Specifically for the area. Of course, this message is directed towards Curtis, as he is notorious <laughs> for copying and pasting shit everywhere. Awesome. This is a this is a very tricky area. I've died here plenty of times with my hastiness. Yeah. Uh, not in this Just playthrough. But you'll see about what I'm the, talking about. Yeah, something about the Balder Knight on the stairs is just makes them incredibly difficult to challenge. Yes, sometimes they will completely whiff, but, you know, not very easy to get the parries that you, you kind of want. Now, I this remember is those the area. Balder Knights. Oh yeah, this area is Oof. very difficult. But those Balder Knights, the guys with this. the red tattered capes, I remember those guys were the first enemy in the game that actually felt like I was fighting an intelligent being, something that actually used strategy and tactics in the same way that I did. Not like these guys, where you can see it's just a horde. Ma this this part's difficult because it's a yes. massive horde of these guys. There was the a Chandler Knights. here. Oh, but you already killed him. I killed the Chandler. But if yeah, the, the Chandler can actually oh. can actually buff enemies around him. So he buffs and he it's a good shoots. Thing he's dead. Shoots missiles. If you run right out in that clearing, you're probably going to die. And that's probably what people are going to do in their first playthrough. Is just, they're just going to run right through this walkway. And then just get yep. gang banged by just all these enemies. There's actually a lot of areas like that where it looks safe to run into. It's a big open room. But there's enemies lurking in the darkness. The bone wheel skeletons, which we'll probably see later on. Those are my favorite enemies because they're so easy, but everybody thinks that they're hard. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. I always die at least once to those guys. Pinwheels. They're one of, one of the most asshole guys in the game. Just because, like, if you try to, if you don't dodge and you try to block, you're doomed. Like, there's no way to escape. Anyway, those are chairs. I could. Yeah, those are chairs. I took pictures for Dale. <laughs> Is he? He doesn't want wood textures. Just go ahead and give it to him. He does appreciate those uh, those sort of screenshots. Yes, yes. All right, we are heading towards the undead relish boss battle. The mustard twins. <laughs> the mustard twins. <laughs> mustard twins. Yep. This is our second boss battle of the game, and yes. fittingly enough, there's two of them. Here yeah, we're gonna Here's see the cutscene. But first, I guess this is one of my favorite intros for any boss in any game ever. Anyway, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, uh, this is where I sort of pause and just look around, but we'll get into it after. Let us show you the cutscene. Hmm, is that a catcher by smell? Mmm. I love me some burgers. Ooh. Catch up! Hey. Alright. I actually. These guys. These, this guy. These guys. First boss in the game that I had to just try over and over and over and over again. Yes. Was this boss right here? Yes. Uh, and you'll see why. Yeah. Over here, I'm doing pretty. I'm going to work on this guy, but then he summons his brother Luigi, <laughs> and they proceed to try the jump on my head like a Goomba. I died. And you, you died. I died. <laughs> <laughs> um, just want to point out that you do have the option of summoning an NPC to help you along this battle, but that's the easy pussy mode way. Yep. So I just I went hardcore like a boss here, just solo. That's really, it's really the only form of uh, difficulty selection that Dark Souls has: the ability to summon NPCs. It's really interesting that they chose to do that. Most games would have probably a hard mode and an easy mode and a normal mode that would like adjust enemy HP or how much damage they do or something Woo! like that. Dark Souls chooses to not do that at all and in 
instead to have the actual difficulty selection of the game be worked in the game world and the lore and the gameplay mechanics itself in the form of NPC summons, which is a pretty awesome uh -oh. thing if you think about it. Yeah. As you can see, the battle is sort of getting heated up, no pun intended. So I am going to try to isolate them, but I end up taking lots of damage. Oof, look at those those long reaching arcing swipes. This fire damage is nothing to, to laugh about either. I am gonna take advantage of him just sort of breathing his fire. And right when he dies, you know, the challenge is, is completely lost. Now this guy is isolated. And now I can just deal with him. Game. Yeah. The tables have turned. The tables have turned. And now he's going to pay for all this this uh, fire breathing immobilization and he is going to fall to my blade quite easily he does drop the gargoyle helm I believe they drop other things I think a gargoyle shield yeah, yeah. they can drop their halberds they can drop their shield and you actually get all of it when you kill them in uh, when you kill the there's, no, you actually see you see these guys again, not as a boss, but as just a normal enemy later on in Anor Orlando, up there, beyond that wall. You see yes. these guys again. They make a comeback. But they that they try. Normal enemies. They try to make a comeback. They try. <laughs> they will eventually fall to my blade. So we're gonna go to the the bell tower. This is actually a very annoying part for the excessive use of ladders. Just a long hike upwards. Definitely take a look at those textures and just how the environment blends with this. Sort of like the player is required to look around or is tempted to look around the world. You know, we should have a bell tower. Mm. This sounds like a like a really good thing for Nexus to, to work on. He's really good with that. Yeah. Yeah, Towers. Nexus, the, the highest tower in the castle city, put a bell in it. Put a bell. Put a bell in it. Yep. I'm gonna ring it. Ring a ring ding 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 ring a ring 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 ding 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 ding. Totally random, exactly. but very exactly appropriate. Like you can actually see Sen's fortress in the background there. I never really noticed that. Just a nice little cinematic cutscene there. Am yeah, I gonna actually if, look? If you didn't know, um, at this point in the game, all you know about what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to ring these bells. You're supposed to ring the bells of awakening, and that's literally the only direction that you have. You're told to ring the bell of awakening, and that's it. You don't know anything else about the story. You don't know anything else about who you are, what you are. All you know is that you're meant to ring these bells. It's a very interesting way of storytelling where they don't directly tell the the uh, the player anything at all. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much like you are the chosen undead. Kate, thanks, bye. Pretty much. You don't know what the chosen undead is. You don't know what you're supposed to do. All you know is you're supposed to ring these bells. Then you you meet the crestfallen warrior whose utter depression just seems to set the mood. This guy is a partner. If you get any NPCs mad at you or get any covenants mad at you, you can come to this guy, spend 1200 souls, and absolve your sins. Because everybody knows that, you know, consulting somebody else with a uh, Solves problems. conflict between you will uh, definitely reduce the hostilities. <laughs> Makes sense. He's also a merchant. You can buy various Rings. Most of them are useless. Well, the Ring purging of sacrifice stone. is useful. Purging stone, yes, and ring of sacrifice is pretty useful. Yes, yes, those are very useful items. His homeward bones are relatively cheap as well. Uh, it's good, around good place to stock up. If, you're, if you have spare souls here at this point in the game, just go ahead and stock up on homeward bones. Anyway, yes. I guess this is the end. This of is our, the end. Our time. And we will continue to make more videos, and we will see you in the next video. Indeed. Raw. That's the wooden shield.